right, that's just going to be the comp part. Um, basically, what we're winding up doing is we're just doing a complete chordal type of thing with a couple of small single note embellishments. Uh, I basically on this took a small amount of liberty from a uh, rhythmic aspect. The idea is pretty much there though as far as the chords, what you're going to wind up doing. Um, so let's get to it as far as what I kind of have in the style of. So if you're comping, um, this would be something that would work really good. It helps you do just a small amount of fills in between stuff because keep in mind as the vocalist is working, you want to be working less. Um, fills are just exactly what they're uh, stated is they aren't solos, they aren't uh, designed to get in the way of the vocal. A small little thing and some tasty little single note chromaticism uh, suffices. You can do a little bit more during your solo. So you're filling the space, in other words, in between what the vocalist is doing. So the first pass for this, um, there's going to be two different uh, kind of uh, areas where you kind of want to focus on. First of all, we're playing a sixth chord. So those and I also have the A note at, uh, here, or you could play an open string. It sounds fatter on the E string. So you go, So let's cover that part first, and then we'll get to the kind of second pass through. So what we're doing here is you've got a rhythm going on. You're just kind of following what that melody is doing, and um, I'm playing this probably about 75% of what the recording that I'm basing this off of is. So it just gives you a little bit of time to kind of play catch up. We're just playing this sixth chord right here. Boom, ba, ba, da, da, and then just a nice little slide down. Boom, ba, ba, da, da, that chromatically approaching. So what we're doing is we're using that up, we're moving to the B, we're playing a ninth, grabbing the pinky note there. So it becomes a six nine chord. So nine, eight, nine, nine, okay? So, and then we're gonna go into the E ninth chord and we're gonna do just a little passing thing. So we're playing an E nine, if you've ever played blues, you got this, but we're gonna only do the upper structure to it. So you're covering from Just that single note line, pinky, ring, middle there, is, is, uh, suffices enough. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a walk up and do a walk down over an A6-9 chord and then an E6, which turns into an E9. Really all you need to worry about are these shapes that we've kind of been covering. So we got um, half step slide. So there's only one finger shift that you really need to do as you slide in. You've got this shape right here. And then what you're going to wind up doing is you're going to wind up doing a slightly different thing. So you get this sound, 11, 11, 10, 9. And then you're going to go 12, 11, 12, 10. Okay, so you're going to have that type of sound, which changes it because now we're over E. The previous one... So after we do that single note little passing thing, da -da -da. very common, but it, it, if you wind up comping uh, over uh, a tune, the, all of these things work. The sixes, six chords, the ninth chords, little chromatic passing uh, notes right there. And that's going to be the first pass that I have uh, for you. The second one is a little bit different. So you got that. So all you're doing is using the shape again, half step approach, half step approach. Da, da, da. And just use use kind of the rhythm to the melody line. I do that a lot, even when I solo, because it's 
it's the most predominant part. It's what even a person that doesn't play music is whistling along to or humming along to. Um, it, it adds structure to your musical ideas, which um, makes it much more musical. And it fits because it's already in the song. So you don't need to necessarily reinvent the wheel as far as that goes. But what this does is now you're beefing up your comping part. You're adding these nice little chromatic uh, parts. I mean, you can hear the song clearly in it. So the next part is we're not going to do that jump up to to the B9. We're actually just going to stay in this uh, a B6 type of pattern. And what we're doing is after you go, and you're going to do that twice. I have a times two in your tab, so just note that. down so you're not doing that upper note there that's all it is you're still implying you're still implying the a chord there so in its entirety boom Mostly on that, I would I would advise you as you're comping, you can do fingers, but what works a little bit nicer is probably just the rhythmic aspect of it using the pick. That's probably what I would recommend. That's how I've kind of been playing it through and through. If you're practicing doing this just with hybrid, just make sure that you've, you're going to have to use either two strings on the pick or you're going to have to use your pinky actually. Almost like that. So the pinky is going to grab the upper note. The one thing with that is that you can just practice doing the chords like that. It keeps the right hand a little bit more quiet and you can flick. But if you prefer, there's a little bit more rhythm to this. And, and of course you're swinging because it's a, it's a swan song. So you can be a little bit lazy with that right hand and it just gives it a little bit more feel to it. There's a lot of cool uh, ideas that I use to comp in a lot of different uh, songs. Maybe the chord structure changes, but really the idea is pretty much there. If you get to know a couple of these shapes and just small little things like over an E9 chord, see that in a lot of swing tunes and a lot of cool ways to comp over uh, a, a shuffle type of pattern or anything that swung three and four note chords with small little single note lines to connect them. Really cool stuff right there and that would be just for the first pass we'll get to the four chord and what happens there. Uh, you're outlining the basic changes to the entire song right there at least in the first portion of the verse chorus. There really isn't a verse in this as it's a, kind of a verse chorus combination as far as the uh, the progression type goes or the arrangement. So we'll cover what happens over the D chord because we're working our way down. You can hear you can hear that in the chords, which is the whole point of comping and setting things up that way. So I hope you dug that. Lots of cool stuff in there. Make sure to check out your tab and I'll always. Uh, use the song as a reference because I'm doing it as close as I possibly can. If you want to get it even more exact, just use your ear and kind of make sure that those rhythms are there. Hope you dug that.